you may begin. Thank you, and good morning to those of you joining in the Philippines, and good evening for those of us who are on the East Coast of the United States. Uh, today's webinar will be about a country outlook on the Philippines, where you will learn about the demographics, market, economy, key economic drivers, and trade in the Philippines. You will also know the best prospects for U.S. products, key sectors for U.S. businesses, the business culture, and trade missions in this country. My name is Linda Abrazizi, and I'm a Senior International Trade Specialist for the Global Knowledge Center for the U.S. Commercial Service Global Markets at the Department of Commerce, and I will be today's moderator. This webinar is being brought to you by the Global Knowledge Center and the Foreign Commercial Service in Manila, Philippines. Our main speaker today is James McCarthy, who is our Commercial Counselor for the U.S. Commercial Service Philippines. And now I'd like to introduce live online Mr. James McCarthy. Thank you very much for joining us, Jim. Thank you, Linda, and Magadang Umagao, or good morning in Tagalog. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be here today to uh, show off, really, the Philippines as a place to do business, and we think it's a very exciting place to do business uh, here. And let me go to the first slide. Um, really, what I'd like to do with these presentations is really start off with, uh, you know, a bit of a one-pager, an elevator speech on really what you should know about the Philippines. Uh, first, it's a very stable government. Um, it is a democracy with a uh, president and two houses of Congress. They have set terms. The president has one six-year term, and the House and the Senate, much modeled on ours, um, on our system, uh, functions uh, pretty much along the same lines, with the uh, Senate having three-year terms and the House being elected as a whole uh, every three years. It is the 12th most populous country in the world. I think a lot of people don't know that. It has about 100 million people. It's the fourth largest English-speaking country in the world, and that's uh, an enormous advantage uh, for the country as it attracts uh, U.S. and uh, other um, foreign uh, investors in business. And most, probably most importantly, is the legacy that we have with the Philippines. Um, as probably many of you know, uh, we, uh, as two countries, have a long history together, over 100 years, where the Philippines was a quote-unquote colony of the U.S., part of our commonwealth, uh, up through the wor uh, World War II. And because of that, we have a long historical relationship, as well as the fact that really kind of stemming from that, we have uh, now 4 million Filipinos in the U.S. because of this long history and the relationship that we've had. And equally so, uh, it doesn't show up on the slide, but we have about 400,000 Americans living here. You can see the extensive uh, relationship, people-to-people -people relationship that we have between our two countries. Now, the fifth on the list is a young population. This is an extremely young population with a median age of 23 years old. What does this mean? Well, it means that this economy has a certain dynamism that will continue well into the future. Uh, and, in fact, they expect that this is a really kind of an economic window of opportunity lasting for uh, some decades to come. The GDP growth uh, at about 6% uh, is probably a little bit less this year, around 5.7, 5.8, um, because of the uh, impact of uh, Typhoon Yolanda last year. But that's the kind of growth that I think most co countries would uh, envy, and it really shows, again, the dynamism of the uh, economy. Next up, um, kind of stemming from the uh, first slide, but we have a very reform in mind reform-minded administration with a good track record of uh, good governance and, and prudent fiscal and budgetary management, although right now it is uh, in a little bit of a, a controversy regarding some of the de development assistance funds. Still, I think most um, uh, analysts and outside observers uh, give uh, kudos to the administration for its uh, overall good governance and uh, its ability or its fight against uh, corruption uh, within the system. Because of that and because of other things, the, including the economic growth, uh, Moody's, Fitch, Standard & Poor's have all given uh, Philippines credit rating upgrades over the last two years, and that continues to go up. 
major industries here, uh, business process outsourcing has uh, become a very dominant factor in the economy with close to a million workers, electronics assembly, semiconductors, garments, wood products, food processing, and the list goes on. The other thing I wanted to point out in connection with this is that the Philippines will be very much in the limelight next year as the host of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Group uh, with a number of meetings with high-level officials, uh, capping off with a senior leaders meeting, which will probably be sometime in the latter part of the year. Um, the Philippine market is a well-established market for U.S. business. Uh, U.S. companies uh, that are well-known are doing very well. The Philippines love uh, U.S. products and services. They actually are, have a very positive overall image of the U.S. And I might take a few min take a minute here to cite a Pew research study that came out, I think, a month or two ago, which uh, asked um, people in several different countries around the world uh, about their about their uh, uh, perspectives on or their their image of the uh, of the U.S. Uh, the Philippines, uh, or let me just step back, the U.S. Uh, had, of course, an 84% positive image of itself. The Philippines had 85% positive image of the U.S. So you can see how popular uh, the U.S. is in the eyes of the Philippines. American brands are well-known and trusted. Uh, anything that is trendy in the U.S., um, Filipinos want to see, want to have here, want to shop there. Again, it's a young population, eager consumers, early adapters of new trends and technologies, they're one of the world leaders in uh, texts and tweets, so they're very much on the, on the cusp of new technologies. Uh, the Philippine economy, largely managed inflation, uh, roughly runs between 3 and 4%. As I've said here, it's a young, fast-growing population with about half of the population uh, below the age of 34. They're looking to improve their educational system. Before it was a K through 10, now they're going to a K through 12 by 2016. What does that mean? Well, that means that uh, the Philippines knows and recognizes that it needs to upgrade, upgrade the capability of its workforce, especially those coming out of high school that will be um, uh, utilized in, in many of the different industry sectors. Here's the credit ratings once again. This, Probably needs to be updated a bit, but Fitch and Moody's Standard & Poor's have all upgraded. There is, however, a disparity between uh, the rich and the poor. There, there are certain uh, corporate groups that uh, you'll find in many different sectors of the economy. But at the same time, as you go to outlying and remote areas, um, there are extremely uh, there are areas that are not doing so well. Um, as, I, as you see here, economic growth drivers, GDP rose 7.2 percent, about, and actually it might be a little bit less in 2013. Consumer spending is the main economic driver, um, and the one thing I need to point out here is that um, the uh, role that overseas Filipinos uh, play in this economy, they, they send back remittances of about $23 billion. Uh, again, that's probably gone up are about 10% of GDP. That is a very much a driving force uh, behind the economy because that's money that's coming in that will be used uh, for families, dependent families here, uh, for spending on goods and services. This next slide uh, shows um, a few surveys that uh, are cited in turn by the National Competitive Competitiveness Council of the Philippines. And this uh, agency or body, uh, NCC for short, uh, really takes a critical look at government. It's a cooperative uh, effort between government and industry. It takes a critical look at uh, government and the whole economy as to how it can be uh, improved in terms of its uh, ease of doing business and its fight against corruption. And as you take a look at this slide going from right to left, uh, you can see the progress that's being made such as in the uh, World Economic Forum Global Competitiveness Index, gone from 75 to 59. ISCs of doing business, 136 to 108. Uh, IMD, World Competitiveness Report, 41 to 38, slight improvement. 
and the corruption index from 129 to 94, uh, all of which shows uh, improvement that they want to continue. Um, and you can see on the far right hand uh, part of the slide that they have targets that they want to meet. In other words, going from 75 to 59 is not going to be enough. They want to get to 49. U.S. Philippine trade, the United States is the Philippines' second largest trading partner. Uh, in 2013, two-way trade was about $17.7 billion. Both uh, imports uh, from the U or exports to the Philippines and imports from the Philippines are, are largely rising at about the same rate, between 35 and 40 percent since 2009. It is uh, the ninth largest market for U.S. agricultural fish and forestry products, food and beverage, uh, larger than countries such as uh, Brazil and India. We are the third largest forward investor in the Philippines with an FDI of about $5.3 billion. And again, that, that may have changed a little bit upwards or downwards. Here's our uh, track record over the last couple of years in terms of exports and imports. We have made uh, some improvement in terms of the trade balance. And as you can see, we've gone uh, steadily upwards over the last couple of years. And like I said, <clears throat> uh, about 40% since 2009. Here's our best products for you, uh, best prospects for U.S. products. Uh, telecommunications equipment, uh, incredibly important here, and especially as I acknowledged the, uh, the EPO sector in an earlier slide. Um, the uh, speed of the Internet network needs to be improved here, um, and the, the access to the Internet network also needs to be improved. So there is uh, some... Uh, uh, there are some uh, opportunities for U.S. companies in that, and as well as ICT, so I'll lump them together. Energy, uh, sort of uh, concomitant with the uh, growth of the economy, comes a strain on the energy uh, uh, on the energy system here. Uh, the Philippines has one of the highest electricity rates in the world, second in Asia only to Japan, which means that they need to develop more energy. Uh, sources and really need to improve their ability to deliver power to the consumer. And so there's some uh, interest uh, in smart grid uh, as well as uh, renewables and, and natural gas and other clean uh, forms of energy. Right now in the short term, uh, from now until 2016, uh, they're relying more on coal, but after that uh, there is the need to look more at renewables. Uh, as a way to offset uh, uh, the impact or diminish the impact uh, or role of, uh, of coal-based coal technologies. Uh, medical equipment. The U.S. actually does very well here, but we know we can do more. Uh, there are hospitals being built not only in the Metro Manila area, uh, but also in uh, the uh, more, more remote access areas in areas like Mindanao. Uh, there are private sector groups investing in hospitals, so we see uh, a need for um, medical equipment in the, uh, in the country for years to come. Building products, especially those that are energy efficient, will also be popular here. Defense and security is one of uh, a many, uh, is, is a major defense security partner of the Philippines. Um, we uh, do play an important role in this sector. We have a lot of interest and there's a lot of need in this sector for the Philippines. Um, so we're looking at uh, this sector as being uh, a good prospect as well. Uh, franchising, uh, you don't need to go far or look very far to find a U.S. franchise here. Again, they've done very well, and any Filipino in the States will tell their relatives or friends here, you've got to have a certain franchise. So that kind of builds up a groundswell for, uh, for that uh, franchise and other franchises. And in fact, this week we have a franchising mission of uh, 14 franchise concepts arriving today, uh, and they'll have business-to-business -business meetings tomorrow, and we, we actually are quite optimistic about the prospects for that mission. Infrastructure, this kind of, kind of goes along with the energy side, uh, with the growth of the economy and the need to certainly just upgrade the ports, airports, rail, 
uh, and other systems here. We think, again, this is going to be a, a, uh, a good prospect for not only now but for years to come. Education, uh, education and publishing. Uh, we can see that from official statistics that only about 3,000, maybe 3,500 uh, Filipinos study in the United States. We think that can be a lot more. And so we're looking to promote U.S. education as a good, as a best business prospect. And then finally, tourism. Um, we have, as I mentioned, uh, you know, Americans here and Filipinos in the U.S. But uh, when the Filipinos go to the U.S., we, they generally tend to visit relatives in areas like California, New Jersey, Florida. We want them to know that there are other areas in the United States that are uh, promising and attractive uh, tourism destinations. So we're trying to widen uh, their exposure there as well. Uh, this is, um, I mentioned a little bit about the agricultural market. Here and uh, I'll just briefly mention this, that it's an important market for U.S. food and beverage uh, products. Uh, and in fact, uh, news just came out that it breached the $1 billion mark in uh, 2013. Um, so some of the best prospects there, wheat, soybean meal, beef, dairy, meat, snack foods, processed fruits and vegetables, pretty much anything across the board. What are the challenges? And uh, believe me, there are challenges, and I've mentioned a couple of them already. If there weren't challenges, you wouldn't need us. Uh, we're here to we're here to help, of course, as always. Uh, there's a legacy of corruption. There are uh, certainly, uh, you know, the corruption doesn't go away within one administration. So um, we have had companies come to us and say, well, this we know that this company is uh, facing problems, be, and sometimes it's often hard to prove, but it's, it's there, and uh, you know you can't ignore it. Uh, the strain in infrastructure, as we already mentioned, uh, that can be an issue as well. Intellectual property rights, probably not so much as it used to be. Um, the Philippines has been taken off the watch list, but still, it's something that uh, companies need to be aware of. Bureaucracy, lack of transparency. Uh, as we advocate for U.S. companies here, it's sometimes hard to know who has the ball and what they're going to do with it. Um, so uh, we, in, in those uh, situations, are the ones who will help companies try to see who's actually going to be making the decision and when. And sometimes that when can take uh, a few months or several months to actually get a decision made. Uh, next on the list is local and national government policy differences. The one thing that uh, companies should realize as they go out of Metro Manila is that uh, local governments have uh, more power than they do in the U.S. They don't always have to follow the national government dictates. So that if you run into a situation where the mayor uh, has, for example, has certain ideas, approaches, or the local government unit has uh, certain rules or procedures, those rules or procedures generally have to be followed, even if they don't agree with the national government uh, rules and, and procedures. A tedious judicial system there, this is a judicial system that's not known for its efficiency or for its cohesiveness. Uh, there are cases where um, decisions won't be rendered for several years or where courts will give conflicting decisions. That's something that as you go into the Philippines that you need to probably take more of a look at arbitration. Or if you do go into the judicial system, that it, you, you need to be aware of the fact that it's going to take a while. <clears throat> and finally, 60-40 investment restrictions. This is not just an investment, but it it is a um, within the uh, Philippine law that uh, the majority of any investment has to be Filipino, and in some cases that's higher. This also has to go into the procurement area where um, – in many uh, procurements, uh, the lead must be a Filipino company. There are, of course, exceptions to that, which I won't go into, but we can certainly address those uh, in a later uh, venue. But U.S. firms do succeed in the Philippines, and as I said, it, the business engagement has been longstanding, positive, growing, uh, and American firms do play a major role in the economy. 
This is, and I have to point out, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, Dan Chan's in the world. With over 600 and maybe close to 700 U.S. companies and, uh, and affiliate members, both not only here in Manila, but in the uh, second most popular, um, second and third most popular cities, Cebu and Davao. Um, we work very closely with them, of course. Here are some of the recent U.S. players um, that have come into the market, uh, Old Navy, uh, Pottery Barn, uh, Ambitech, Motor, uh, Harley-Davidson. We've helped many of these companies, not Google, but Google has now recently set up over the last couple of years an office here. Uh, <coughs> this, um, again, is probably uh, repeating a lot of what I've said, but this is a, a very warm and welcoming uh, business culture and receptive to U.S. products and services. I think... Not that it's always easy here. Um, you always need a representative, an agent, or a distributor. Uh, and it's always good to know your partner, make sure that they have the highest ethical reputations, and have patience. Not everything gets done right away. There might be an initial positive uh, uh, response, uh, but for both companies, for both parties, uh, they need to manage their risk, have patience, and do the due diligence necessary to have the confidence to make the deal. Uh, we've been very busy here, um, uh, probably because more U.S. companies are taking a look at what I call this re-emerging market. Uh, we've had, uh, uh, we had about five trade missions last year uh, in the energy education uh, fields, as well as a trade wins mission in Asia. We were one of the stops. We had trade delegations from Utah and North Dakota. And we had a major education fair here where we attracted more than 400 students and parents uh, and connected them with 29 U.S. universities uh, uh, and it went extremely well. We would look to do the same in the future. Uh, just this week, we have the Franchise Trade Mission. Uh, nine companies with 14 concepts are going to be here uh, uh, tomorrow, today and tomorrow. Uh, later in the month in August, um, we'll have four to six companies from the state of Mississippi in various sectors here, uh, again, to do business-to-business -business meetings. Uh, we have a very important medical trade mission here in uh, February 2015, um, followed by an education fair sometime along the same lines. And I actually have to, have to also mention, it's not here, is that we had uh, just in early June uh, the first uh, visit by a Secretary of Commerce uh, to the Philippines in 20 years when Secretary Prisker came. And he was, of course, a very strong advocate, had very useful meetings, um, and, and promoted U.S. companies here, and really gave uh, a positive uh, reinforcement that the U.S. is very interested in this market. This is... Um, the one thing that the, the Philippines, and many of you probably know this, uh, unfortunately it's often known for uh, its natural disasters. Um, just yesterday we had a typhoon come here through Manila. We do get hit by 20 to 25 typhoons a year, um, and of course uh, earthquakes as well. That is a, uh, that does have an impact on the economy. I show this, this is from a visit I made to Tacloban in January, uh, the devastation that was still ongoing, um, and the damage still ongoing, you know, two months after the, uh, after the typhoon, the, the largest typhoon ever to hit land went through. Um, still, as you can see by the uh, picture on the far right, this child has a beautiful smile, and it's a resilience uh, that the Philippines have that will of, often carry them through uh, any major disaster to, uh, um, to recover and rehabilitate uh, their their homes. This is us, Maboy from CS Philippines. Maboy means hello or greetings. Uh, we are all certainly here to help. We have two American officers, including myself, and about twelve and twelve local staff. This is how you can reach us. And finally, this is my uh, information. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, concerns. Any interest in the Philippine market, uh, please know we've got a dedicated and experienced staff that's uh, here to help you and help you uh, bring your business to come to the Philippines and, and flourish here.
Thank you very much for your attention, and I'll turn it back over to Linda. Thank you very much, Jim, for your time and expertise in this presentation. This concludes our webinar on Country Outlook in the Philippines. Thank you again, Jim, and goodbye. Hey, Jim? Yep. Okay, I think she... Hello?